Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to yet another March Madness video. Now, yesterday I talked about my top Cinderella teams, lower seeded teams that I expect to make a run in March Madness, which starts tomorrow. It's just the first four, but it starts tomorrow. And guys, quickly, happy St. Patrick's Day. It is kind of my day because my name is Patrick. But guys, when it comes to... How about teams that, higher seeded teams that will lose early? I know everybody, it's so hard for people to pick against the higher seeded teams in March Madness. We all want to pick the one seeds to go to the Final Four because they perform the best throughout the year. But guys, upsets happen. I am going to give you one one seed, one two seed, one three seed, and then two or three four seeds. I think the four seeds are very vulnerable in this tournament that could potentially get upset. The one seed I'm talking about that I think is vulnerable in the round of 32 is... Michigan. And guys, I'm sure a lot of people are with me on this. Uh, you know, everybody knows that not all one seed, not all four one seeds are going to make the final four. Uh, and Michigan is the team that basically everyone is picking to get upset. Nobody's picking Baylor to, to get upset early. Obviously not Gonzaga. Obviously not Illinois with the run that they've been on winning the Big Ten championship uh, or winning the Big Ten tournament there. Uh, but Michigan without Isaiah Livers struggling, limp limping towards the finish line. The one trend the upset I've seen with Michigan is in their second round game with LSU. I actually have St. Bonaventure beating LSU in a close one. And then I have St. Bonaventure, as you guys can see here, beating Michigan in the second round. Michigan, I think, is very vulnerable. They had a great season. They've just kind of hit a skid at the worst time. And this is, a you know, obviously a lot of people are picking Michigan to get upset early. So, Michigan is a team to look out for. I have them losing, not even making the Sweet 16 as a one seed. The livers injury played into that. Their overall play late in the season after the coronavirus shutdown played into that as well. Michigan losing in the second round. Watch out for them. My number two seed also from the East region, guys. The East region is wide open. I actually have... Iona beating Alabama. This is my biggest upset of the entire tournament, a 15 over a 2. And guys, when it comes to Alabama, I'm just going to keep it real. This team is the typical team high seed that's never been a high seed before. Alabama is normally terrible at basketball. They're never this high of a seed. Typical team to get upset. They shoot the fourth most threes in college basketball. They rely heavily on the threes. And guys, I'm saying, you know what? I don't think Alabama's going to make threes this game. I think Ricky P, Rick Patino, Iona, we know how it is. Defensive-minded team. Keep it a low-scoring game. And guys, I don't like Nate Oates. I, there's something about Nate Oates that I don't like. He's like a sweaty used car salesman, Nate Oates. He is. He'll be sweating through his little uh, his little jacket come Friday when they lose to Iona. I'll tell you that much. Alabama. I, at something about Alabama I just don't like. I think they're a really dirty basketball program. We know about their football team. But guys, Alabama. You know, this is... Let me... Alabama fans, this isn't football, guys. This is this is March Madness, okay? Enjoy your, your round one loss. You rely on threes. Alabama basketball, they're not used to being a high seed. Again, this is a, a program. Not a lot of, you know, success when it comes to March Madness at all. They get jumped jumped into that two seed. I don't like it. I think Iona gets the upset, guys. You heard it here first. Iona over Alabama. That was also in the East region. Alabama, the perfect team to get upset. Relies on threes. Nate Oates is a wacko. I don't like that dude. Moving on to my number three seed that I think is in trouble. It is Arkansas. And really, this one's a perfect storm when it comes to, I don't think Arkansas should be a three seed. I think they're a bit overranked. I actually think the SEC as a whole has been massively overrated this year. Um, so I think Arkansas probably should be a four seed. But guys, Arkansas, I've said this before, got probably one of the worst draws of the entire tournament. Colgate should not be a 14 seed. At worst case, they should be a high-end 13 seed. Probably even a 12 seed with the way they score the ball. I know they're out of the Patriot League, but you got to look at their net ratings and how dominant they've been in their league. Colgate over Arkansas. I know actually quite a few people are picking the Colgate to beat Arkansas as well. This just seems like one of those games you can feel it. You can feel it. Ar again, guys, Arkansas, they're not that good. They're really not that good. I know they have some young talent. This Again, this is another SEC team. They're not used to being this good. Arkansas is not that great of a basketball program. They haven't been good in a while. These teams, they're not used to being these high seeds. You're, you're going to get upset. You're going to get upset by Colgate, guys. Arkansas, no business, business being a three seed. They get a terrible draw with Colgate when you look at the other side of the bracket. Kansas gets Eastern Washington as a 14 seed. How are Eastern Washington and Colgate on the same seed line? To me, that's a terrible job by the selection committee personally. Um, one team is clearly better than the other, but they're both on the same seed line. I don't understand that. Guys, give me Colgate over 
Arkansas. Moving on, how about some four seeds that are vulnerable? I think the first four seed that I very likely think will get upset is Virginia. Virginia has no momentum right now. You've got an Ohio team fresh off of their MAC championship. They can score the ball. Uh, give me Ohio over Virginia. We know Virginia, the style of basketball that they play is conducive of upsets. We know what happened with the 16v1 matchup back in 2018. They definitely redeemed themselves, and I picked them in my bracketology to earn in my March Madness bracket to win it all in 2019, and they rewarded me by winning it all. I have a lot of respect for uh, Tony Bennett, but guys, Ohio over Virginia, and then really, I could see Ohio making it all to the Sweet 16, all the way to the Sweet 16. I don't have them doing that. But I could definitely see that. Another four seed I think is vulnerable. I did pick Purdue over North Texas. But guys, I'm a little shaky with that game. We know Purdue has had some struggles in the past when it comes to March Madness. They had the great run with Carson Edwards, but other than that, guys, Purdue has vastly underperformed in March Madness. They're a four seed due to the Big Ten being so strong. They've lost quite a, quite a lot of games, um, but we will have to watch that game. I do have Purdue winning it, but watch that game. And my other four seed, I think, is in deep, deep trouble, Oklahoma State. Guys, I have Oklahoma State losing to Liberty. Oklahoma State, very young team. Cade Cunningham, we love it. I can understand why a lot of people have Oklahoma State making it far into the tournament. If Cade Cunningham, we know how the point guards are in March Madness. We, we saw back in 2011 with Kemba Walker and UConn. Uh, you know, they get on these runs. They can go deep. I understand that. I, I can understand if you have Oklahoma State going deep. Be wary of this team, though, guys. Oklahoma State, very young team. They did perform well in the Big 12 tournament, but they were completely controlled by Texas in that Big 12 championship game, that entire game. Give me Liberty. Keep it close. Keep the pressure on the young team. You're the lower seed. There's nothing to lose. We know how these things go. It spirals out of control quickly. Give me Liberty to beat Oklahoma State, and then I have Liberty beating Tennessee. I think Tennessee is a very weak five seed. They got a very for fortunate draw facing the worst 12 seed in the tournament in Oregon State. That's why I have Tennessee beating Oregon State, but then I have Liberty moving on to lose to Illinois, and I just, I wanted to talk about my old overall bracket guys I view my bracket as party in the front business in the back and I think it's a perfect vibe of having these early upsets but guys when you look at my final four it consists of two number one seeds a number three seed and then you have the six seeded San Diego State um, I know a lot of people have Gonzaga Baylor and Illinois in their final four and I could have had that too but I actually have San Diego State upsetting Illinois and my reasoning for that is just it's a weird year. I really, I think Illinois is a better basketball team than San Diego State, but San Diego State's on a run right now. I could see them beating Illinois. It's a weird year. You're not going to have three number one seeds in the final four. Guys, it's party in the, in the front, business in the back. You look at the final four, you look at the national championship game on my bracket, it's two number one seats. It's Gonzaga, it's Baylor. It's the two clear best teams of this tournament. And I just think it's Gonzaga's year. Okay, Gonzaga, you know, it's almost better to have a loss earlier in the season almost because no one goes undefeated. But the thing with Gonzaga is they've just... It seems like they could have easily had losses, but they play in such an easy conference. They seem battle-tested. They've had games. They were down by to by 11 to BYU at the half in their uh, championship game. They came back and won that. I just think this is the time for Gonzaga. They're in an easy region. I think they have a cakewalk to at least the Elite Eight, probably the Final Four. Um, and then that's where it gets real against a team like Texas. I've been in on Texas from the beginning. I love Texas. They won their ch conference championship. That's a, that's a tough conference championship to win. I know they had the coach. COVID situation, so they were able to advance freely. Still a good conference champion, you know, the Big 12, probably the second best conference, clearly the second best conference this year behind the Big 10. So I have them making the final four, Baylor and San Diego State. I really like Baylor, and I think Baylor dealt with COVID. They dealt with some adversity. They lost a few games in the Big 12. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, guys. You play in a tough conference, you're going to lose some games. Gonzaga didn't play in a tough conference. Okay, and I'm not saying Gonzaga's bad. I have Gonzaga winning the whole thing, but you're going to lose some games. Let's not overreact to Baylor losing two or three games, whatever it was. Um, they're going to come back. They're riding the ship. You take a look at Baylor's region. You know, that, sec that second round game against North Carolina, that scares me a little bit. I'll be honest with you. But I think their draw, Villanova as the five seed and Purdue as the four seed, that's phenomenal for Baylor. That seems like a walk to the Elite Eight. And then you've got a team like Ohio State who doesn't play very good defense. I think uh, Baylor, you know, Ohio State also very undersized when it comes to their big men, Kyle Young, EJ Liddell, good players, but very undersized. And Baylor, the depth, the point guard depth, it's unbelievable. Uh, that's why I like Baylor, obviously Gonzaga. 
Texas, and then San Diego State, who's been hot. Again, kind of a trendy pick. I know a lot of people aren't picking San Diego State in the Final Four, but they're picking San Diego State to go deep. I could definitely see San Diego State getting to the Elite Eight. And then, obviously, the Illinois-San Diego State game is kind of a leap right? It's it's tough to sit there and say logically San Diego State can beat Illinois, but you know what my reasoning is? It's March Madness. Guys, when it comes to the top-seeded teams that you do not want to pick, let me reiterate, Michigan, I'm sure most people would agree with that, Alabama. Guys, if you have a work colleague that, that's picking Alabama to make the Elite Eight or Final Four, that's a fireable offense. I mean, I wouldn't even listen. I mean, it's just, it's so obvious, man. Like, I've seen the, I have a vision of this. I've seen, I've wrote in the script. It just has to play out, guys. Alabama is going to lose to Ricky P and Iona. They're losing. Deal with it, Alabama fans. Go back. Go to Nick Saban. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Alabama. This isn't football. This isn't football. This is March Madness. You're going to jack up about 36 threes. Oh, you have a cold shooting game. What happens then? You're losing to Ricky P in March Madness. Iona beats Alabama. My number three seed that I don't like, guys, it is Arkansas. I don't even think they should be a three seed. Uh, but again, it's a combination of Arkansas probably should be a four or a five seed. I'll give them a four seed. They, listen, they ended the season strong. They won 12 of their last 14. I want to respect them but they shouldn't be a three seed. And then Colgate definitely shouldn't be a 14 seed. I mean, if Arkansas got matched up with Eastern Washington, I mean, I'd pick Arkansas. They just got screwed with the seed line. Kansas gets Eastern Washington um, and, and Arkansas gets Colgate. That's unfortunate. It is. And guys, these four seeds, very vulnerable. Watch out. Virginia, trendy pick. Ohio upsetting them out of the MAC. Watch out for Purdue. I have Purdue winning because it's like there can't be that many upsets. So I wanted to do, you know, you got to pick some of the 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 four seeds. So I had Purdue winning. And then the other four V13 matchup I had, Liberty over Oklahoma State. By the way, guys, the other four V13 matchup that I haven't talked about at all is Florida State and UNC Greensboro. I do not see that as an upset. I do not see Florida State on upset alert. I think the Seminoles handle business in round one against a very good UNC Greensboro team. Let's give them some credit, but it's unfortunate. They really weren't that great this year. They weren't talked about a lot, unfortunately. They won their tournament. Good for them. They get in, but guys, Florida State's going to beat them pretty easily. I think that's a really good draw for Florida State with UNC Greensboro as, Burrow as a 13 seed. Guys, how about some of these 13 seeds? Some of these 13. Liberty is a good team. North Texas. Um, uh, you know, you know, you guys know what I think about uh, Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington is not a good 14 seed. They're almost like a 15 seed. It's kind of like Oral Roberts. Guys, how about Joe Lenardi picking Oral Roberts to beat Ohio State? That's just disrespectful. That, that really annoyed me. It really did. It's not, it's just disrespectful. And I know why he did it because Ohio State doesn't have any really true stars. We kind of have a, a semi star in EJ Liddell. It's disrespectful. Ohio State, Chris Holtman, we're going to be ready for Oral Roberts. They're not going to get upset, guys. Give me a break. They're going to beat Oral Roberts by 20 points. Good Lord, even without Kyle Young if he doesn't play. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. We are one day away from the first four starting. We are two days away from March Madness officially kicking, kick, kick, kicking off with a full slated games on Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, what a time it is. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Make sure you're following me on Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. Link to that's always in the description. I am, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.